Hey everyone, welcome back to another Fusion 360 tutorial. In my last video, I showed you how to make a mesh or a grid in one layer, and the parameters would control the dimensions of these cutout squares. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do it a little bit more simply in uh, Fusion, and it also prints a little bit different. So what sparked my interest in this was the screen model that I came across on Maker World the other day. And I know you can do this in your slicer, but I wanted to give you a little bit more control over kind of the spacing of the grid and the size of the square. So I decided I would make a fusion model. So basically how this gentleman created this was he drew out one layer of grid lines and then on top of that another layer of grid lines and what happens when you print this is this top layer or the second layer ends up kind of drooping down and you, you pretty much end up with one layer thick and it creates a pretty strong mesh i was actually surprised how hard it was to break it so Let's go ahead and create this model. And like always, when I'm creating a parametric model, my goal is to not only have the parametric model be robust and uh, not break on us, but also end up with just one body at the end instead of a bunch of bodies. So let's start a new design and let's get right into it. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a few parameters. And so we click on this button right here, change parameters. If you don't see that, it's under modify and all the way at the bottom here. So once we're in the parameter window, we can hit add user parameter. I'm going to type in my first one, which is just square size. I guess you can just name, you could name this like mesh size. I'm not sure what makes more sense. So I'm just going to keep square size and we'll just start this at 100 millimeters. The next parameter is going to be grid number. And this is how many of those grid lines are inside of the mesh. And we'll start this out with like 30 or something. And we'll hit OK. Uh, it doesn't matter where, what numbers you use for these. I always like to use whole number or, you know, like even numbers just, just because. But you, you'll be able to change these later on. So it doesn't really matter what numbers you choose here. So let's hit OK. And let's make our first sketch. So we're going to click the sketch button. We're going to click on this bottom plane. And I am going to snap my mouse to the origin, click and drag up for a rectangle. And the shortcut for a rectangle is R on the keyboard. So you can see at the bottom, it's highlighted as 6.954. I'm going to change this to 0 0.8 because that will give us, while we're 3D printing, that gives us two layer lines, because a layer line is typically about 0.4. I'm going to hit tab on the keyboard, and this next dimension is going to be square size. And then you can hit enter. So let's finish this sketch. And we are going to extrude this up. So I'm going to select that sketch profile, hit E for extrude, and I'm going to type in 0.28. And 0.28 represents my layer height. And that's about as thick as you can go with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on my P1S, Bamboo Labs P1S. So that's what we're going to do for this. So now that's one side of our mesh. And now let's make the other side, this right here. So I'm going to create a sketch on top of this grid line. R for rectangle and drag out this way. And this dimension is the square size. And this dimension is 0.8. And hit enter. And now finish sketch. So now I'm going to extrude this as well. E for extrude, 0.28. And I'm going to make sure this is set to join. So when I click OK, this is now all one body. Okay. And if we can check that right here, we have one body. So now let's set up our patterns and let me get to this top view and you can see what we have created here. So let's first pattern this 
body right here. Actually, I shouldn't say this body, this feature, which is that first extrude. So right here is the pattern tool. If you don't see that, you go to create and somewhere in here, right here, pattern, rectangular pattern. So let's click pattern. Usually when you get into this window, it's going to be set the bodies. I'm going to select features. We're going to go all the way down to my timeline here and select that first extrude that I did. And the axes will be this right here or the axis. It actually does. You, you work, it, it allows you to pick two axes for the um, pattern, but we're only going to use the, the, the one. So the quantity is going to be grid number, which is that second parameter we set up. And the distance, now if we put in just the square size, look what happens. So here's our grid number, which I think we set to 30, but it overshoots this by one length, so 0.8 millimeters. So what we have to do for distance is subtract 0 0.8 and hit enter. So then no matter what you change that square size to, it's going to make it that size or that distance at minus 0.8, which then evens it out. So let's kind of get back into the 3D view here and you can see what we did. So now we're gonna pattern this feature. Same thing, we're gonna hit pattern. It already has features selected, so we're going to go down to the second extrude that we did. The axis will be along this line. And we are going to, actually, you know what? Let me hit cancel. One thing we should be aware of is I don't want to select this line because this line might not exist if we change the quantity. Actually, you know what? Maybe it will always exist. In a parametric model, you don't really want to reference things that might change unless um, it's in a sketch and it's projected um, so it changes with the size. So I'm actually going to choose the, the axis from the origin point for this one. So I'm going to hit create. The feature is going to be this right here. The axis, I'm actually going to select the green line here, the green axis line. So now we can do the quantity again is grid number. Hit tab to go down to distance and it's going to be square size minus 0 0.8 and hit enter. Now I'm going to show you something right here that makes a difference for me anyways and I guess I don't have a really good way of explaining it. Um, but how these patterns are calculated. So we're pretty much done. This is it. You can see we, we made our grid. So if we go into our parameters here, I could change this to 50. And let's see how we do. And there it changed it to 50 by 50. I could change this to 10. And it works perfectly. Now, I don't think this is a complicated enough model that I have to publish show you what I'm about to show you but let's just double check it let's just do like 60 here and there you can see it's taking a long time but that really wasn't wasn't too bad one thing you can change when you're doing your patterns I'm going to click back into that first pattern we did and instead of compute type being identical you can just go to optimize I'm sorry a lot of times it's on adjust and that takes the computer a lot longer to calculate. So if you choose identical or optimized, it will speed things up. But that one's already on identical, so we don't need to worry about that. And I believe this one probably is identical too, which is probably why my calculations when I changed those parameters um, didn't take too long because it was already set how I wanted it to. And let's see if I can even get into this. Ah, my computer's being screwy. But anyways, there you go. So now when you print this, let's just go over to the slicer here. So I'm going to go up to File, 3D Print, click on this body. We'll, we'll import it as a 3MF and we'll hit OK. OK, so here is our mesh. 
Now, the things you'll have to change, or really the only thing you'll have to change, is the layer height. It's usually set at 0.2, so we're going to change this to 0.28. And you can hit ignore on this, and the initial layer height will also change to 0.28. Now, you could change these all to 0.4 if you really wanted to, but I don't think that really matters. So let's slice this. And we'll show you how it prints. So if we go down the, see how it prints two lines per grid line. And if we go to the first layer, it does the same thing. So printing it this way creates a really strong mesh. Like I said earlier, I was pretty surprised how strong it actually was. Um, yeah, there you go. There's an easy way to make a grid, a parametric grid or mesh in Fusion 360. If you want to see the more complicated version that I did yesterday, just go on my Facebook or my YouTube page and look up the last video before this one. And we, what we did in that video, if I didn't explain it already, is instead of controlling the number of grid lines, I actually controlled the size of the opening here the negative square space here and that was a little bit more involved but i think it turned out pretty well so all right guys we'll see you on the next one